Welcome to the tutorial exporting your movie. So now that you've finally completed all the scenes that you need for your animation, it's time to learn how to export them and then eventually how to edit them together. So obviously exporting depends on where you plan to show this animation or what you plan to do with it. For example, if you plan to composite uh, an animation with a transparent background with live footage, then you might have different rendering needs than if you plan to export a low-res version of your animation to put somewhere on the web. In case you're wondering, as it's a question that's been posed by many of our users, uh, when we finally put together all our animated sequences, that is if you're creating a full animation with multiple scenes, uh, we actually are going to do it in a third-party software, and this will be done in one of the later videos. In this video, however, I'm just going to go over how to export using the various formats that are available in both Animate and Animate Pro. I'll be doing this through Animate Pro, but I will point out any differences that exist in Animate as usual, and I'll be using almost all the scenes that we created from the effects chapter. So to begin, let's look at how to export a QuickTime movie. So to do this, we have to go to the top menu and select File, Export, Movie. Then the Export to QuickTime Movie dialog box opens. Um, if you're using Animate and not Animate Pro, you won't see the Display Source section um, from this dialog box. So the first option we have in the Output section is where we'd like to save our movie and what we'd like to name it. So I'm going to browse for a location on my computer. And I'm actually going to put it in my uh, Chapter 22 folder. And I happen to know how many scenes I'm going to export and what order that they should appear in when I do the final montage. So I'm going to actually name my scenes by their number. So this will be Karate Rabbit Scene 05. It's actually going to be the last one of five that I plan uh, to string together. And then I'm going to click on Save. So the display source here is allowing you to know which display will be rendered. Um, in this specific scene, we actually have two displays. We have a display below the composite, um, and we also have a display that's attached just to the Karate Rabbit. So if I select display all, the software will render everything that we see in the scene right now in the camera view, um, which happens to be everything that's coming out of the composite. If I change this to Karate Rabbit, so it's good that I aptly named my other display, then I'm just going to display the Karate Rabbit or the animation of the Karate Rabbit uh, with a transparent background. So I have the option of doing that as well. So I'm going to go back to Display All. Then you have the option of exporting your entire scene or just specific frames. Um, you often run into wanting to export specific frames if you want to do tests. My scene, once again, is actually quite short. It's only 127 frames, but often the scenes are longer than this. And um, if they're loaded, for example, with different effects and you know many things being animated, etc., it could be quite heavy to export if I'm just doing a test to look for quality or just doing a little animation test or something. So you can always have that option of selecting a frame range. So I'm going to say all in this case. Then down below you have the movie option. So let's click on that and it opens up the movie settings dialog box. So the top part is for video, and the second part is for sound, and the third part is for internet streaming. Um, so obviously checking or unchecking this uh, box allows you to even make changes to the video. Um, and if we click on the first button, the settings button, it'll open up a third window. And this is the standard video compression settings dialog box. So those who have a lot of experience with video won't find this too scary. Um, people who don't have a lot of experience, you might have to do a lot of internet research as well as a little bit of experimentation. I happen to know which compression types, so which codecs I find useful, um, but it really does depend on, once again, your scene, its intended use, etc. So it really does depend. Animation is a popular one for MOVs. Um, as is H.264, so I think I'm going to go with that one, but um, it's good to do a little research and look into them and figure out what works best for you. And like I said, you can do a small scene render with different codecs and different compression types until you get the quality that you're looking for. So here in the motion section, you can change the frame rate. It's always by default set to current. Obviously, if you select a lower frame rate, 
your scene will go faster than its intended speed or the speed that you've seen as you render previews um, from your scene. And if you choose a higher frame rate, obviously your scene will go slower. And there is a list of um, standard frame rates as well as the ability to create a custom frame rate. So the keyframing is something that you shouldn't get too confused with. It's not about the keyframing in your animation. It's actually keyframes that are created in the video. Um, and I would just leave it to the default um, setting of 24 frames, so every 24 frames. But don't get this confused with the frame rate for your scene because it's not the same thing. So the only other thing that's kind of important from this section is the compressor. So obviously, if you want this to be top quality production, you can change this quality setting to best or high, of course, with the knowledge that this will make your file size heavier. Um, and then obviously, if you make it a lower quality, it'll make your file size lighter. So it really is a balance between file size and quality. And you can even select a quality setting down here as well. So if you want to do faster encoding, it will be faster, obviously, at a lower quality. So I'm going to say OK. And any changes that I might have made will now be listed here on the right hand side of the video section of the movie settings. So I changed the compression here from animation to H.264. So we see it here and I changed the quality, I think, um, oh no, I left it at high, but if I changed it to best, you would have seen that. So this is a quick glance at what you would see in the settings. Um, the filter we're not going to get into too much. Uh, it's something I would suggest you look at the user guide to learn more about. The size, of course, you can always change. I keep it to current, but if you want to make, for example, a smaller render, you can do that here. It's obviously not recommended that if you're working in a 169 aspect ratio, like your scene is 69, and then you export uh, to a 43, that's obviously not recommended. So if you are going to uh, scale down, please try to stay in the same ratio. So it's probably better just to do a custom. So I'm just going to leave that as is and uh, click OK. So down here we have the sound settings. So once again, we have our sound settings uh, listed here. Um, but if we want to change any of them, we can go into our settings. So compression right now, there's none. And I would generally leave it at none. Uh, so you get 100% quality with no reduction. But of course, you can look into any of these compression settings. Um, and any type of compression you add to the audio will, of course, lighten your file size. Um, the rate here is 22.050, which is actually quite low. There is no sound for the specific scene, so it doesn't really matter. But I would actually suggest using 44.1 or 48, uh, especially if there's music. It will make a huge difference. If there's someone talking, the voice might sound a little bit dull, a little bit less rich. But definitely for music, uh, I would use one of these two bottom rates. So the size, we're going to go with 16-bit. And once again, if we actually did have sound, I would go with stereo. Uh, generally, 16-bit is associated with stereo and 8-bit with mono. Almost everything these days, I think, is done with stereo. So I would just generally keep it set to that and say, OK. And actually, I'm just going to change this even though there really is no sound. But these would be the settings I would use and say, OK. So the last option that you have is to prepare for internet streaming. So everything I've said here is actually quite high quality. Uh, I don't think you'd put anything this high on the internet, but if we were doing something of a lower quality that you would like to be lighter for streaming, you could always check this, prepare for internet streaming. Otherwise, you could uncheck it. And of course, if you check it, you enable uh, this drop-down menu. You can select from either of the three, and I think one of them... The hinted streaming allows you to go into the settings for that. So I'm not going to go into detail about that either, but once again, you can always refer to the user guide. I'm just glossing over some of the general settings, but anything very, very intricate, once again, you might have to do a little bit of further research into it or some experimentation. So I'm going to say OK. So now if we go into our Finder, as I'm using a Mac, if you're using Windows, uh, you would browse the location where you stored that video. So for me, it was Pack 22 of my Animate Pro 2 scenes, and we can see that it's right here. So I can click on it and we can play it if you'd like in the QuickTime player. And here we are, here's my scene, I can play. And we can see that we have a fairly nice quick time render. So the next type of export that I'd like to talk about are SWF exports. But to do this, I'm going to load another scene.
So let's click on the Open Scene button. And I'm going to open the sample material from pack six. And if you remember from the effects tutorial, it looks something like this. So the reason that I selected this scene is because in the scene, we added an SWF effect, and that was to the Karate Rabbit title. So we find it here, Karate Rabbit Text White, and we double click on the blending effect to bring up its layer properties. We can see here that the blend mode is set to normal, but the SWF blend mode is set to difference. So if you look in the camera view, you can see it looks like the text hasn't changed at all. It looks white. And that's because you can't preview SWF effects either in the OpenGL view or the render view. The only way that you can view an SWF effect is by rendering a preview here by clicking on the test SWF movie. So let's do that. And it's always a good idea to test these effects before doing any type of a major render. So this is what it looks like when we have the difference blending mode applied. And just as a reminder, not all effects that are available in Animate Pro, or Animate for that matter, are supported by the SWF format. So once again, you should review those video chapters before doing any type of a render with an SWF effect. So to create an SWF effect, uh, you have to go back to the File menu and select Export SWF. Once again, you have the option to select where you would like to save this render as well as to rename the render. So I'm going to save it in the exact same location as the QuickTime render that we made. And that's in the Pack 22 folder. Um, I'm going to name this Karate Rabbit Scene 01 because it will be this first scene of my montage. And then click Save. So once again, this display source section is not available for Animate. It's only available in Animate Pro. Um, and this specific scene, we only do have a single display, um, and that's the only one that's available. Well, there's display and display all, but, but this is the one attached to the composite. Next, we have the option of whether we'd like to export um, all of our frames or a frame range. And of course, you can always uh, change these values in the start and end fields. But I'm going to export all in this case. Um, then we have the option of changing the frame rate once again, and it's exactly the same as it is for QuickTime. You should always try to match the frame rate for your scene. If you're not sure what that is, you can always cancel um, from this export to Flash Movie dialog box, and then go into your scene settings, and it'll tell you what the frames per second is for your scene. Then you can select JPEG quality. Um, obviously, the higher the quality, the heavier your file will be. These two options here are actually pretty specific for SWFs because um, SWFs are often used for web viewing. So protect from import. If you check this, then no one else will be able to bring your SWF file into one of their own software editing programs to change. So it sort of protects your SWF export. And of course, if we want to compress the movie to make it even smaller than it is, you can always check this option as well. Then you have the option of disabling some of the effects that exist. So in this case, the one that we're using is blending. Uh, I actually don't want to disable it. I would like to export these blending options. But if you're once again doing quick renders or if you want to preview some SWF effects without them interfering with others. So that's why this is here. So I'm actually not going to protect from import because obviously later on, I'm going to want to bring some of these into a third party software um, to string together. And then I'm going to say, okay, And then let's browse for our scene in our finder again to see that it's there. And we can double click on it to preview it. So I'm previewing it in my flash player. As you can see, it's on a loop and that it looks quite nice. So I'm gonna close that and the finder as well. So the next type of export I'd like to show you is an FLV export, but once again, I'm going to open a different scene. So let's save our changes. 
And this time I'm going to open up the sample material for pack 13. And I'm going to go to the render mode to show you what this looks like. Uh, so this was the scene where uh, the bird swoops in and we see this motion blur occur. So I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to go to the top menu, select File, Export, and this time I'm going to select Flash Video. So I'm going to browse once again for a location on my computer where I'd like to save this file. And I'm going to name it Karate Rabbit underscore scene 02 and click on save. So this dialog box is identical to the dialog box for the QuickTime render. Uh, once again we have a display all source which once again we only have uh, the display all and the display for this scene. And this time I'll put on display all. In this case it happens to be the same. And then I'm going to select my export range and once again I'll select all. The frame range that happens to be set is all. I only have 60 frames, but so either or would have been acceptable. If we click on the video options, um, this is where this dialog box differs from that of the QuickTime. Here we can only select the difference between the bitrate and the frames per second. So I'm going to keep them at their default settings. And for the sound options, there are also fewer sound options. So it's by default set once again to 22 uh, kilohertz, 16 bit. You know, we might put that to stereo, we might put that to 44.1. Uh, but once again, this scene doesn't have any sound, so it really isn't a big deal. I'm going to click on OK, and then click on OK one more time. So then let's browse once again to that folder where we saved this uh, FLV export. So we see it right here. We can right click on it and open it with um, any of these uh, media players. So I'll open it with the default Adobe media player. And there we can see both the color scale effect and that motion blur um, of the birds swooping across the scene. So I'm going to close that as well as the finder window. So next let's take a look at how to export OpenGL frames and this is only applicable to Animate Pro so not for Animate users and once again for this type of export I'm going to open up a different scene. So if you remember, this is a lip syncing scene. Uh, there actually is sound for this one. And if you see here, there's um, the tone and the highlight effect that we added. So right now we're in the OpenGL view and you can see the overlap of strokes. You can see these hard pixelated edges so there's no softening around any of the lines. If we go into the render view mode, you'll see that this highlight and this tone blends in nicely with the color of the skin. There's a softening around the lines. So this is the render view mode and what most of our exports have been so far. The OpenGL mode is much cruder, but serves a purpose. If you're animating a scene with many, many effects, if you happen to be using a complex multiplane scene with a 3D multiplane structure, if there are a lot of bitmap images, etc. Basically, if your scene is overloaded with a combination of any of these things, it can make your scene quite heavy and very slow to render. Uh, by rendering OpenGL frames, what you're essentially doing is trying to trade the quality of what is being rendered for a faster time. So to render OpenGL frames, once again, you have to go to the top menu, select export, and it's the last one here, OpenGL frames. There are two types of exports that you can do with the OpenGL frames, and that's either an image sequence or a QuickTime movie export. So this is where you would choose the difference. So if you say frames, it automatically assumes you're going to render an image sequence. And if you select movie, it's going to be a QuickTime movie export. So once again, we can browse for where we would like to save. So let's go to the same place as all the other 
renders that we've made so far. This is going to be scene three and I'm going to save. And I'm actually going to start with um, an image sequence. So obviously the suffix is what comes after the prefix, which is the file name. So you will always see this being Karate Rabbit scene three, 01, 02, 03. So that would be the suffix to our file name prefix. Um, you can always change the number of leading zeros that exist. So if you know that you have a thousand frames, it's probably better to use uh, one of these two bottom numbers. If you know you only have 16 frames, you probably can stay on this number right here. Um, then you can choose the file type. So it can be pretty much any file type that you would save an image as PNG, JPEG, TGA. The difference between PNG and PNG4, so that's a portable network graphic, is that the 4 indicates that there's a fourth channel, that's the alpha channel. So there's the RGB channels and an alpha channel. So if you're rendering just, say, the character with a transparent background, um, a PNG4 would be a pretty good option. So I'm just going to select PNG in this case. So here you can choose how big you want your render to be. Do you want it to be half of your scene's resolution, your full scene resolution, a fourth? Um, once again, because, like I said, this is going to be a crude render, um, the software understands that you're probably doing this as a test and not as a final render. So it realizes that you might then want to create an expert that's half the resolution, a fourth of the resolution, etc. because this is a quick test. Um, I'll keep it for now at scene resolution, and so I can, once again, choose the range and this time you also have a greater selection for the frame range that you can export and once again this is because it's sort of assuming you're doing a test. You can do all frames, a frame range, just the current frame, so just one image, or selected frames which allows you to say skip certain frames because for the frame range you have to do a consecutive number of frames but here you could do 1 to 10 skip 11 to 17 and then do 18 to 25 for example so you can do that and you can also select all or unselect all so in this case I'll do all frames um, and like I said before if you select the movie it really is just going to be uh, the same options as an MOV render I actually meant to cancel and render the image sequence so let's try that again let's do that and say okay and so we can also see a preview of our images being strung together. So these are actually an image sequence being played one after the other. And then if we actually go to the place where we know these images have been saved, we can see that they're all here. So from 106 to uh, number 1. And as you can see here in my scene, you might see the 110 over here, so we know that it actually does go to frame 106. And you might want to put all of those in a folder if you can. Actually, I might do that right now. And so that makes that a little bit neater. So now I'm going to close this. So the last type of export that I'd like to show you is how to export an image sequence. But I'm going to show you how to do this specifically in Animate and not Animate Pro. It is possible to export an image sequence from Animate Pro, but we have to do this through the network view. So I'm going to save that for the next video. So for now, let's open up an Animate scene. So let's go back to the Finder. And this time I'm going to open up the sample material from Pack 16 for Animate. Okay, so obviously since we're opening this in Animate, there's a few um, of the effects that don't work with the Karate Rabbit because I believe he's still in this scene. So I'm just going to click OK. Um, and this was the hand-drawn scene, if you remember, of this cloud, and we added the glow effect of the stars and carrots that you can only really see in the render mode. 
So unlike the OpenGL frames, this time when we render an image sequence, we can actually render it like this, like full bitmap with all the effects. So don't get OpenGL confused with image sequences, because like I said with the OpenGL, you can actually export it as an MOV as well as an image sequence, so it's not specific to image sequences. And actually I might end up re-rendering uh, the previous scene as an MOV because I realized that as an image sequence there is no sound, and that happens to be the one scene where there is sound. Um, but anyway, so let's just go back to the OpenGL view for a minute. And to export an image sequence from Animate, so not Animate Pro, but Animate, it does exist in the File menu. So you'd go to File, Export, Images. So this is very similar to um, the dialog box that we saw for exporting images or the OpenGL frames. So you're asked to select a prefix. Um, I would suggest something more descriptive than final. Uh, and in my case, I'm going to name it Karate Rabbit underscore scene scene 04. And then after the hyphen, every frame number will be listed. So 01, 02, 03, et cetera, all the way to however many frames you have. So it looks like we have 127 frames, so it'll go up to dash 127. So the default place to save these frames is actually in the frames folder for this scene. So let's just browse there for a minute and I'll show you. So let's go up a level back to pack 16. So if you remember that in the folder where your actual scene file is, so the .anim file in this case, there are a bunch of other folders, so elements, environments, frames, jobs. So this image sequence is then going to be exported and saved by default in this frames folder, unless of course you choose a different location. So in this case, I'm actually going to go back to pack 22 and put it with the rest um, of our exports. So I'm going to say choose. And then my file type, once again, I can select from uh, quite a few uh, bitmap options. Once again, if you want transparency, it's best to use something like TGA or PNG. Uh, so I'll leave it as a TGA, a target file for now. Um, you can change the color mode as well. So you can do color transparency, once again, if you did want transparency. Uh, if you don't need transparency, like I don't really in this case, it's best just to stay with color because it'll eliminate any unnecessary information that your file doesn't need. And the color mode will change depending on the file type that you choose as well. I think if you choose PNG so you don't get that grayscale option, for example, but with Targa you do. So these will change depending on which file type you have selected. You can also change the color depth as well. Um, then once again, we have the range, so you can select all of your frames, it tells you what that means, so up to 127 frames, or once again, you can always select um, selected frames and enter in a range. So this time, unlike with the OpenGL image sequence, you can actually select to preview. So with the OpenGL, it automatically previews as it was rendering those images, and it strung them together so you could see what it looked like as a short movie. Um, here you can decide you want to do that or you can decide not to. In this case, I'll decide too so you can see it, what it looks like. And then I'm going to select OK. Okay, so that was all 127 frames. We can see that right here, and we can see what it looks like if those frames are played together. And I'll close this. So let's go into the Finder and take a look at the image sequence. So once again, I think I could have created a folder for this before, in fact instead of doing it after the fact, but so that might be a good idea. So I'm going to put these all inside and actually let's take a look at the difference between the OpenGL frames and just a regular image sequence render. So once again, these ones were done in Animate. And this is just the uh, Apple Previewer. 
So this looks kind of nice. You can see the anti-aliasing. The lines look very soft. The effects have also been rendered. Um, let's see if we can try to find maybe a frame with an effect. So you can see that that glow is actually rendered um, in this bitmap image. So I'll close these two. Then if we go to scene three, we can look at the open GL frames. So these are the ones where that anti-aliasing was not applied. So you can see how jagged and pixelated the outside of these lines are. Uh, and this effect is actually quite a hard edge and you can see it runs off into the collar. There's no softening occurring. Um, so that's what an open GL frame looks like. And so you can see the difference between the two. So I'm gonna close that as well. And I'll close this again. So that's it for the tutorial, exporting your movie. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, rendering movies and image sequences in Animate Pro.